This video is for everybody who loves this classic USA staple, K-Bar. Stick around. Let it be known, there are a lot of variations of this all-American classic. But this is the 1217 model, the United States Marine Corps edition. Comes with this gorgeous leather sheath. I don't know about you, when I get a good leather sheath, I can't stop smelling it. I'm like that with my buck knives, man. Those sheaths smell so good. Now this video is not a review. There are just some knives out there that don't need any more reviewing and the K-Bar is one of them. This video has been sponsored by my friends out at Tomar's K-Bars. I tell you what, they are a one-stop shop for everything K-Bar. You'll love their website, you'll love their selection. They've got everything. And to top it off, they've got great prices. You'll find a link to their website and this knife we're gonna be looking at in the description section of the video. Now let's get into the history of this blade. This video deserves us diving into the history of such a knife like the K-Bar. This knife was first adopted by the United States Marine Corps in 1942 and later adopted by the US Navy. The design for this knife came about as a result of a complaint from Marine and Army soldiers in World War II who were issued this type of Mark I trench knife. And a lot of the soldiers did not like the brass knuckle finger guard on that combat knife. They felt the hand guard limited their range regarding various fight grip positions. Another complaint about the trench knife was its thin blade that would often break during utility task. There's so much more I could say about this, but I'll summarize it by saying the K-Bar came about as a result of soldiers who were looking for something that was good for fighting and utilities. Typical utilities would be like cutting wires or opening ammunition cans. Like I've said before, a lot of people out in the field are using their knives as pry bars, but I wanna tell you something that I believe the K-Bar is not. Though this is heavy in the world of combat and utilities out in the field, this is typically not a bushcraft knife. Now, you can do a lot of bushcraft with it. I mean, we all know that, but that's not what this is for. The biggest complaint about the K-Bar is that a lot of people don't like the handle construction or the tang, because as you can tell, it, it's a rat tail tang. The tang comes all the way through the handle like this. And if you look close enough at the base, you can see where the tang enters. It's not a full continuous piece of steel, the same width of the blade, like you see with a lot of typical full tang knives. And a lot of people don't like that. Another example of this would be the Cold Steel SRK. It's mega popular, but it's a similar setup. It does not have a full tang piece of steel running all the way through the handle. It's got kind of a rat tail tang that runs down through an over molded type of handle. Now the SRK uses like a rubberized handle, whereas, you know, this is a stacked leather handle. The reason why certain combat knives like this are designed with this type of handle is ergonomics. When you hold this in your hand, it's a big difference from holding two G10 scales with a piece of steel running through it like you see with most full tang knives. With full tang, you've either got micarta or G10 scales attached to both sides of the steel. And yes, there's plenty of comfortable handles that's made like that, but it's not comfortable like these or like the SRK. The SRK, in my opinion, has got a much weaker handle construction than something like this. But nevertheless, handles like this and the SRK are naturally more comfortable and ergonomic and grippy. The primary disadvantage for a handle like this is if you like to do hard chopping with your knife over time, a handle like this is going to suffer. Joe X, for example, did a really good torture test on a K-Bar knife about a year ago. It was like the green version of this. And, you know, he did a lot of heavy chopping against things and he was eventually able to get that handle loose. Granted, as much as I love Joe's channel, most people are not going to need to abuse their knife to the degree that he abuses them. He just puts them through an all out torture test to see how much they can take. It's very interesting. I mean, think about it. If you've got a rat tail tang going through the handle and you're beating against stuff like this all the time, you know, after a while, you're probably going to be able to, to move that tang in this handle. But I will tell you, you won't be able to do that very easily with a K-Bar. It would have to be extreme abuse. Other than all that stuff, man, 
this knife is perfect. That blade shape is absolutely perfect. It's no wonder that this is one of the great American staples. When you hold this in your hand, you're holding a knife, man. This thing is ready to get down to business. Even if you never used this, just having something like this in your collection is worth it. Look at that seven inch blade and think about the combative effectiveness of this and the reach that it has. Even if you're just doing simple drills, whether it's an X slash, you can just see that. Look at the, the length and the reach of that blade coming here, here, into the thrust. You can just see how much you would be working with in those situations. You know, even in a reverse grip type of scenario, you just see the, the reach that you get. You even have a nice pommel. So how does this combat blade apply to average everyday people like you and I? People that are not out in the field fighting in war and fighting in battle. Well, just because we're not fighting a war in a battlefield somewhere don't mean we won't ever fight for what we love. And a lot of people like to keep these kind of blades in their hit the fan collection. If you like the K-Bar, you don't have to get the classic edition with the brown leather stacked handle and the brown leather sheath. They make these things in all black. You can get the full size like this one, or you can get a more compact version, which is about a five and a half inch blade. You can get it in the leather stacked handle, or you can get it in all black. You can go out to Tomar's K-Bars and just dig through it. Check out models like the 1211. The K-Bar 1217, ladies and gentlemen, a beautiful combative American classic. What do you think about the K-Bar? I'd love to hear from you. Take care.